Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. During the past two weeks, I've received at least 25 email questions from viewers, each relating to one aspect of dates or another. Now, while it's impossible for me to uh, answer these requests individually, I have put together the most common uh, problems that were expressed, and I'm going to go through and show you how Excel stores and displays dates. When we want to enter in the current date, we have two choices. We can use a function, the today function, which is dynamic. It's volatile. It will update based upon the date that's in your computer system clock. So equals today. I notice that I always type my functions using lowercase. If you're using Excel 2007 or 2010, you can use function autocomplete. I press the tab key. Now I must finish it off with a matching parentheses. Now this date will change tomorrow. It will change to October 28th. On the other hand, if I want to date stamp uh, the date in a, a cell, I can use a keyboard shortcut, control and semicolon. So this date stamps the current date. Now the important concept here to understand is that dates are numbers. They are numeric values. And in Excel, all numeric values, if they're entered correctly, align to the right side of the cell, as you can see. Now, what we have on display is a formatted number. It's formatted by using the short date format. What is actually stored is a serial number. Let's see how this works. Let's use the equal sign and make a reference over here to these two cells that I just entered the formula and the keyboard shortcut in. If I change the formatting by coming up here and on the home tab of the ribbon in the number group with the drop down, if I just change this to general formatting, you see this serial number is stored. Well, how did this serial number come to be 41,209? Let's step back for a second. Excel began keeping track of time on a particular date. So as far as Excel is concerned, what is day one? Let's simply come up here and change the formatting for a number. Let's change it to a long date. So as far as Excel is concerned, all dates begin on Sunday, January 1st, 1900. Now, if you understand this concept, now this kind of arithmetic will make sense. Let me come back here and I'm going to change the format over here to be general. And now I'm going to do a calculation equals this date minus five. So if I want to know what day was five days before today, I do that numeric calculation. When I want to see it displayed as a date, all I have to do is select the cells and then just change the formatting. So let's keep it as a short date using the United States month, day, year. All right. Now, let's come over here and take another look at the difference between what is stored and what is displayed. Once again, I use the keyboard shortcut. I'll do it again. Control semicolon to date stamp. Notice that the number, which is the numeric value for the date, aligns to the right. This is what is stored. So again, pay attention to the formatting. Up here, I have a short date. Over here, I have a reference to that cell, but I've changed the formatting to general. This is what's stored. Over here, I have another reference to the cell that contains that keyboard shortcut that has the current date stamp, control semicolon. I simply change the formatting. Now, you can use a wide variety of custom formats. So if I want to have the day, the month, and the year, I format it using a custom format code. It's really simple to do. Just come up here into the number launcher. You see that little right arrow over there? That opens up the format cells dialog box on the number tab. So I applied a custom format to it. So D stands for date, M stands for month, and Y stands for year. So in this case, I use one D, two M's, and four Y's for the years to get that formatting. Over here, the formatting was slightly different. Over here, the format that I use for the custom, I used, again, a single day, but this time four M's to spell out the month and four Y's for a year. 
So it really doesn't matter what formatting, as long as you have the core uh, basis that you have a number in there. Take any number and then just change the formatting. All right, now, why do I recommend that you always use four Ys when you are formatting dates for years? Here's why. There actually is a century break between year 29 and year 30 in a century. So over here, I've entered 1129, and look what I get. Let me show you. I'm going to enter 11 for January 1st, 29. I'm just putting in the year, not the four-digit year. I get 2029. Over here in this cell, when I enter in 1, 1, January 1st, 30, it goes back to the last century. So always be specific. Always put in the four digits for the year. Now, another best practice when you are copying and pasting or when you are entering uh, data into a cell, it's always good to clear the formatting ahead of time. So notice over here, if I type in 1, 2, 3, there's formatting that remains. So when you delete content, the formatting remains. 1, 2, 3, and you see that I have that long date. Let's come over here. 1, 2, 3, and I have clear formatting. 1, 2, 3 over here, and I've got a red font in there. So the easiest way to clear the formatting, make your selection before you paste into a range or before you enter data. Home tab of the ribbon over in the editing group. What you want to do is the drop down menu next to the eraser. You want to clear the formats. If you want to get rid of the content as well, you would clear all. So you have a choice to clear the format and leave the content in place or to clear uh, the content only and leave the formatting in place or clear both. So in this case, let me clear the formats. And now you see I have a clear entry in there. All right, now let's move on to another concept that came from a viewer. This was from a viewer who does more programming. He um, imports dates that come from a customer's uh, mainframe computer. And as you can see over here, the data is year, day, and month. And he wants to be able to put it into a format that he can work with. Well, there's a fantastic tool called Text to Columns. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to make my selection. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it over here. I'm going to use Escape to take it off the clipboard. With my selection, I'm going to go to the Data tab on the ribbon, and I want to use Text to Columns. Now, in this case, I'm going to skip ahead by clicking Next twice. Here's what's important. What I want to be able to do is when I want to import the date, I want to bring it in in the form. I want to translate it from this format, year, date, month, into the short date, day, month, year. So I come down here with the drop down and I'm looking for year, date, month. There it is. And then click finish. And now you see how it's been put into a format that I can use. Day, month, year, according to the US system. Here's another one. Let's make the selection. Let's place it on the clipboard. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Escape to take it off the clipboard. This time the format of the source data is year, month, date. So with my selection highlighted, text to columns, and I'm going to click next twice because this is what I want to get to. In the drop down, I want year, month, date click OK, click Finish, and there you go. Now it's been put into a format that I can use. All right, finally, here's a question that I had this morning. Uh, I had a viewer from uh, uh, India say she's having problems when she copies and pastes data or dates that are in the U.S. short date form to a European form. So here's what I recommend. Rather than copy and paste the dates, First, select them, and we can use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift Down Arrow to make our selection. Now let's use Control 1 to open up the format dialog box. Let's convert those formatted dates into general format, into a serial number. They're still selected. Now let's copy. When we paste in Excel, the default is to keep the source formatting. 
So we want to then just move over those general dates. And now that they're still selected in the destination, let's again use Control-1 and let's change the format. Let's use a custom format. In this case, we want to have day, month, and year. So it's really simple, custom, and then just come up here and put in there D for one day. Let's use a period. For month, let's use four M's to spell out the month. Let's use another period. And again, remember, always use four Y's for the four-digit year. Click OK. And there you go. It's really very simple. And if you wanted to come back here and change these back into the short date, control shift down arrow to make the selection. And this time let's do it from the home tab of the ribbon. Let's change it in to a short date using the USA format. Now, as I said, I can't respond to every question as much as I would like, and that's why I spend so much time putting together quality video training resources. They're attractively priced. Each of my resources comes with the Excel practice file, so you can actually practice what I demonstrate on the screen. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.